G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and I tell you what, it's heating up here with the change of seasons. In this video, I'm going to show you how I convert this old bed where the crops have done their dash and then with this jolly hot weather, I'm going to sow some Jolly Roger and I'm hoping for a jolly good crop. Let's get into it. Now about the only reason that I would keep a bed like this coming into our hot summer is to let it go to seed, which it has. The native and also the European bees, the honeybees, have had a good feed on it, but I just don't want to take all that goodness out of the bed and throw it. I could put it in the compost, most people do, but I'm gonna show you how you can actually put this back straight into the bed and sow straight over it in one hit. And that way you can recover some of those nutrients that all these big leafy crops have taken out of the bed and whack it straight back into the bed. But before I do that, I better rip it all out and put my hat on. Well, I certainly don't need a jolly jumper. This was just the pea trellis that I had. It worked well, just for those mini peas. I'm going to put all this in one pile so that I can easily get to it because what I'm going to do when I put it back into the bed is mulch it. Gosh, look at the stems on these fellas. Jeeps. You can shake off all the dirt when you're removing plants from a bed to try to salvage as much as you can, but inevitably you're going to get bed sinkage in a raised bed and you're going to remove materials just through normal work, removing weeds or removing plants, etc. But mulching it and getting it back into the bed will save some of that. This one didn't even have a chance to get ahead. Just got too hot and it's going straight to seed by the looks of it. And removing these big plants that are just sitting there growing and going to seed will actually give a bit more sunlight to this side of the onion bed. And that'll help them develop as we come into summer. And we should get a really good crop of onions out of that bed. I put the mulch pile in the wrong spot. Would have been nicer right there. Let's aim this properly. I reckon about that. Just as long as I get the trajectory right, we should be fine. Just like sighting a gun pit. Okay, soldier, here's your arcs.
Have I ever told you how much I love my hands, a chipper? Nice and evenly around the bed. This beautiful green stuff, I tell you what, it's, it, it's blooming lovely. Spread it nice and even all throughout the bed. Now I'm going to lightly dig this in. Just loosen up the top six inches of soil and just dig this under. Just to mix it in. The worms will get to it. It'll compost down pretty quickly, especially in this weather. The thing is, this amount of green stuff going straight back into the bed is not a problem. If you had like heaps and heaps, like say that much thick, a foot deep all over it, then you could turn this into a composting bed. Then you probably shouldn't sew anything in there for a number of weeks until it's settled down. Even that out a little bit. Now I'm just going to throw a little bit of blood and bone, a few handfuls around. This blood and bone here, this is from a Queensland company. It's Australian owned, it's local. You won't see this stuff in the big stores like Bunnings. They are stocked by small nurseries and a small online presence. I don't get any kickback by the way. I'm not affiliated with these guys. They just kindly gave me some product for free and asked if I could give them a shout out. One of the nurseries in the local area God bless them, mentioned me and said that I might be able to give them a bit of a shout out and um, get their brand out there a little bit. And I'm happy to because I like supporting small businesses, people who try hard. They're trying to compete with the big brands. I'm not saying you should give up your big brand fertilizers and that. I'm just saying, have a look, see what your local area is doing. It goes back into your local area, the money that obviously you give them. And if they are a good product, which this is as good as any other blood and bone of the big brands, why not give them a shot and use it? Anyway. So, just to sprinkle around, not too much because remember, this bed is already fairly fertile and as that organic stuff breaks down, it will even put more nitrogen back into the soil. Also, I put some manure in here when I last did these beds, quite a lot of manure. And you don't want to over fertilize corn because you can get long, leggy, green plants that don't produce very well. Now I'll give this a good water in before I top it with some more soil. I got this from a local landscaping supplies company. It's a premium soil. It's got all the things that I like in it. In this case, I'm not going to add any extra cow manure because like I said, it's got plenty in there. So we'll just use this premium soil instead and just top it up with maybe, I think we'll only need one of these. This will probably only take half a bag, if that. I 
I should probably put a mask on for this because that fine particles can sometimes get into your lungs. Probably a few inches deep. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of running tracks around the bed, probably two or three, probably about eight or six inches in from the edge. And we'll get as much corn as we can in this bed. And this is where I'm going to sow the corn kernels. That's it. Now I'll do another one. I reckon we'll get two more. You want them about 30 centimetres apart or 25 to 30 centimetres apart. Now I'll sow my jolly jingos, I mean my jolly jumper, I mean my jolly roger corn. I've got a whole heap of it here. I don't know how many seeds I got, but there is a ton. And because I want to sow a ton, and this isn't the only bit I'm going to do, but I'm going to sow it fairly liberally. And the reason for that is I want to make sure at least some of them come up because you're going to get some taken maybe by rodents, by birds, by insects, or they'll rot or something. So if they all come up, I'll just happily thin them out. We'll just keep them about 25 to 30 centimetres apart. And now I'm going to cover it with just about an inch of potting mix. Well, it's a seed raising mix actually. A proper propagation seed raising mix. Just uh, nice and thick, probably an inch, maybe two. What I like about seed raising mixes is it's usually got peat in it and that peat helps to keep the seedlings moist, it doesn't dry out as fast. It's nice and fine and it makes it easy for the seeds to come up through. And now I give it a good pat down, just to firm it down. Seeds like to be tucked in. And the last thing I do is give it a good water in, of course. And you want to keep this just damp, you know, not sopping, but in hot weather you'll want to water this at least every day, sometimes twice a day if it's really hot. Maybe once in the morning and then late afternoon give it another drink. But you don't want it to dry out. Especially once you start that seed germination phase, it's important that it gets steady water and it doesn't dry out, otherwise you can kill them off real quick in hot weather. Well, that was a jolly good idea to sow that Jolly Roger. I think it's gonna be a jolly good crop. Well, let's hope so. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a jolly gosh mark. That was a good video. Big thumbs up and share the video around and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.